Okay, so uh, welcome, Max. Thank you. So first of all, uh, maybe to get to know you a bit better, could you tell us a bit about your background? My background? I'm a student from the University of Twente. I studied uh, as a bachelor's uh, creative technology and afterwards as a master uh, interaction technology. And yeah, that's it. Now working as a researcher in uh, the University of Twente as well. Okay, so you've always been in the Netherlands. <laughs> Uh, I've also studied as a Erasmus in, uh, Nord in Trondheim in Norway mm. and in New Zealand in Christchurch as well. So mm. I've done some things, yes. <laughs> cool, yeah. Then you got a bit of uh, experience all mm. over the world, so to say. All right, uh, so coming to our next question. Uh, so you did a study where you used FNIRs um, in soccer players mm -hmm. with more or less experience level mm -hmm. um, and you measured FNIR, so you measured brain activity during penalty kicks. Correct. Could you maybe elaborate a bit more on that study? Sure. Uh, it was my master's thesis and I wanted to, well, I wanted to do, a, when I started I wanted to do something with brain activity and something with sport. That was the only criteria I had. And then I needed, of course, a sport where you have a, an action that's uh, still, where you stand still, otherwise you don't measure anything. And then I came to penalties, because how is it possible that professional players who have such a control over football miss from 11 meters an easy to score goal? Um, so that's how I came to it. And then I was at the University of Twente. We had the soccer pitch, it was actually on the, on the field. And we had, I think, 24 players in total, 12 of which were experienced. They played football twice a week, and the other one never played it before. And they had to take uh, penalties on the different pressure conditions, and then to see how they, uh, well, how they achieved, and uh, then look at the brain activity related to failing and uh, performing under under pressure. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, in which brain region did you actually measure? Uh, measured the prefrontal cortex. I measured quite a lot of areas. Oh, I can point. Show it a bit, yeah. <laughs> right there. Uh, okay. We measured the uh, primary motor cortex and we measured the left temporal cortex, which is somewhere here, I guess. Those are the areas we um, we measured during the well, during the study. And the, finding, the findings were, it was a bit hard because it's well, uh, still there was some movement we could be improved, but we had some Some results that uh, showed that the prefrontal cortex was more activated when missing penalties or when under pressure. And we think at uh, least an explanation could be that prefrontal cortex, well, it's related to emotions and long-term thinking, that it could be that they start thinking about consequences of missing or scoring that penalty instead of focusing on the penalty itself. Did you have differences between um, the experienced and less experienced participants? A bit. Not, uh, there wasn't that much uh, difference, actually. Mm. But um, what we saw in general was that um, it's kind of, we call it brain efficiency. So you use the areas of the brain that you actually need for that task. So we saw that there was a slightly higher motor cortex activation uh, when performing well, when actually focusing on the task and activation in the prefrontal cortex, um, well, lowered your Uh, lower your performance. There was a distraction. And for, especially for uh, experienced players, the activation of the left temporal cortex was also a distraction. Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's related to um, uh, self planning or self instruction. So, as you can understand, like if you instruct yourself, it's very useful when you learn a new skill, when you do it for the first time. So, for inexperienced players, When they activated, it actually helped. But for experienced players, they already know the skill, so they don't have to instruct themselves anymore. And for them, it was more the distraction. Oh, yeah. Okay, so thanks for this explanation. No worries. Um, so you already mentioned it, what you did was the so-called on the field study. Um, so you actually measured on the soccer field um, and not in a normal lab setting, mm -hmm. so to say, um, uh, and like more a real life scenario. 
Um, what would you say were advantages, but probably also challenges of mm. performing these uh, or doing these study design? Yeah, so there's a lot of advantages, I would say, because while well, you're actually closer to the real situation, and uh, that's one of one of the aims to get as close to the real situation as possible. Especially in sports, they often <coughs> often when you show studies, uh, people at like sport clubs they complain like, yeah, but these pressure conditions are no way close or the situation is not close to the real situation. I still got that after this, like, nah, no, it's not a real stadium. You're not, you don't have the actual pressure, but at least you get closer. So that was a huge advantage. You're close to the real situation. It brings a lot of challenges because, well, for this, the weather conditions, I had to cancel a few experiments due to the weather because it's outside. And yeah, you have more noise, but with FNAS it was well better than EEG to uh, to get rid of that uh, that noise or to prevent the noise. But it's uh, it's a bit more planning, and you um, well with this I had to remove the whole setup again because people had to train on the field and then get back and yeah. But in general, I would say close to the real situation. So. So do you think that has an influence on the results? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so, especially because um, if you have experienced players and they they're just on the the pitch they're normally at, then that's the the only difference is the exp the, the well how to say the the tasks that you apply or the things that you apply. Like I apply different levels of pressure. Mm -hmm. but if you move into a live situation, then it's, something is already new, and I feel that that's further away and maybe well participant starts acting different or not the same as they would normally would. So I would say, yeah, it's uh, it's better than a lab situation for these things, yeah. And you also mentioned that uh, there were quite some movement artifacts, which is of course logical because it's the sports after yeah. all. Um, can you maybe talk a bit more about how you did the analysis or how you removed uh, or how you dealt with movement artifacts? Yeah, so, Uh, well, we did some things beforehand. We, as I said, I decided to do penalties because you, before you take a penalty, you're actually standing still. And I instructed the participant to stand as still as possible for five seconds. In the future, I would have done 10. Then you have more of a, an area. But, um, <coughs> so that already helps, of course. And afterwards, uh, we have to look up the terms. I think it was TDDR, something, uh, artifact removal that we used. I have to look this up later, but I can't remember, but fine. <laughs> All right, good. Um, so yeah, afterwards we did some signal processing to remove um, motion artifacts. And we actually only use this, well, this area of five seconds for each trial. Mm -hmm. So there should be there was, well, there should be no movement uh, involved. So was it more like a block design study then? Okay. Yeah, it was. Actually, it was uh, 15 blocks in total five blocks of the lowest pressure condition when there was even another goalkeeper and just said, well, just shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, five with a goalkeeper, but then there was no other pressure applied. So the goalkeeper didn't talk and there was nothing. And then the last one, we just went all out. So they had to like, like in real soccer games where you um, have a penalty shootout, you have to walk with the ball in your hands for like from the, the, the middle to the penalty spot. So you have all this time And then me and the goalkeeper started, well, shouting things and uh, applying pressure. And the one that performed best could actually win uh, 50 euros as well. So there was a lot of things that they had to, uh, that were distracting them. And yeah, so there were five penalties of those of each category. All right, I see. Uh, and you used the Pride, right? Yes, I used <coughs> the Pride. Okay, so would you say that this device was a good fit? to perform an on-the-field study? I would say so, yes, especially because it's uh, via Bluetooth. And I think with the dongle, it can go up to 100 meters, which is perfect for sport situations, because now I wasn't in the way. I could just stand further back and also safety with a football that doesn't hit your equipment. So this actually was, it was perfect that you could just apply it and would just stay on the head and you didn't have to use any gel or anything. So this was, uh, yes, it was good. It's very good. So then we have the one million dollar question. Oh uh, I already realized you are also yourself a bit interested in sports. Yes. Probably also in soccer. So would you say that Luis van Gaal should uh, do more 
scientific research on penalty kicks for the Dutch mm. national eleven. Oh, he is. He is actually. He was the first one that actually oh. uh, includes a lot of statistics and uh, even uh, even got a special keeper for penalties and whatever and trains on it. But the only thing he doesn't do is train on the pressure of a penalty kick, just on the placement and the force and how to train it, but not training on how to deal with the pressure. And I would say that's something that could be uh, could be improved. So yes. would you say your study would be helpful for him? Yes, yes. Okay. If, he's li if he's listening, then please... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can try to call him. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. No, okay. yeah. I would say that's one thing that could be, uh, could be improved. Okay, I see. Do you think that in the future there will be more on the field studies uh, or should there be more on the field studies in your opinion? I think so, yes. I think it's, uh, well, the beginning is more challenging, especially with brain related research. But this is the first step already and it could, well, this is the very first just to see if it was possible. And it turned out it was possible. So I think in the future more and more of these, uh, these studies will appear. It's easier to do and yeah. I think it also well it also gets more attention afterwards and uh, it's close to the real situation so yeah so can you think of any like scenario scenarios yeah. in sports or oh, a lot mm -hmm. so I well it's uh, the easiest when you have a situation where you're standing still before you do the movement when you have to concentrate so I was thinking about for example a race with running right mm -hmm. before the start you can maybe well look at the brain activity there to improve your concentration right before the start or with archery right before you aim or right before you shoot or a lot of stuff before diving with uh, with swimming yeah a lot of situations where you could uh... and also with the football penalties it turned out i i measured right before kicking mm -hmm. but it turns out the, the most pressure is actually when you're standing on the on the, the middle of the pitch yeah and now you're actually standing still and then you can also measure a lot i would say so yeah Okay. A lot of situations. So good tips already. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, so what would you generally recommend um, other researchers that decide to perform um, on the field studies with movement involved and for sports science reach, uh, purposes? For sports science purposes. Uh, well, I would recommend what I didn't do was... Um, a lot of measurements just to see what the activity itself was without mm -hmm. like uh, just just the kicking itself so then i couldn't compare if it was just kicking or if it was anything applied if it was actual experiment so that would be something good to include and other than that it's just a lot of trying the first one's always is uh, hard so a lot of pilot studies right before you uh, before they do the actual thing yeah. and if you can do it under a roof yeah. so there's no weather uh, conditions yeah